In today's video, I'm going to go over a derivation for the change in the potential energy and the change in the total energy or the amount of work it takes to raise a satellite from one orbital height to another when we increase its orbital height. Now, before we do that, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Please support my channel. When I look at my YouTube analytics, I see that more than 90% of the people who watch my videos have not subscribed. Please support my channel and subscribe. And also a bunch of other teaching learning materials which you can find at my teacher's pay teacher's website, whether you're looking for some notes, whether you're looking for practice problems for this topic or so answer with the with the solutions, of course. And also there's some puzzles and some online labs that you can do with the interactive simulations from PHET Interactive Simulations all available at my Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is, of course, in the description below. And I made a bunch of other videos for this topic, which you can link to in the upper right-hand corner of this video. This is satellite motion. We're going to first derive the equation for the change in the potential energy when we raise a satellite from H1 to H2. So we're going to call this lower orbit right here H1. It's at a height above the Earth. We're going to use the Earth in this example. And then we're going to increase its orbital height up to H2. Two, that's height 2 above the surface of the Earth. And of course, I said we have the Earth and we have the radius of the Earth in this example. Also, now to find the change in the potential energy, we're going to use this equation, which is the potential energy or the change in the potential energy is the final potential energy minus the initial. It's always final minus initial, so it's potential energy at orbit 2 minus the potential energy at height 1. And when we're going to be calculating the potential energy at a elevation above the Earth's surface, we are going to use this equation that the potential energy is equal to minus g, which is the gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, and then capital M I'm using as the mass of our central object, and then we have the mass of the satellite, lowercase m, and then we have r. r is the distance from the center of the Earth out to our first orbital height, or the radius of the Earth plus the orbital height for our second orbital height. We always have to include the radius of the Earth and then add to that the height above the Earth's surface. Now, what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to take this term and substitute it in for both of these. I have to remember that these are different heights, so I'm going to say that this is the change in the potential energy is minus. Don't forget the minus sign. It's very important. GMM over R2, because this is the radius for height number 2, and the, the, the final height, and then that's going to be minus, we have a minus sign here, and we have a minus sign here, so it's minus a minus, and this is GMM over R1. Now, don't forget that minus a minus is a plus. We still have a minus over here, so this term is going to become positive, because this is going to be minus a minus is a plus, so I'm going to put that term now in the front of my equation, so you can see I have GMM R1, and then minus GMM over R2 like that. Okay, so now I have some common terms in here in this equation, which I'm going to factor out. We could leave it like this, but oftentimes we factor these terms out because GMM are the same GMM for both of these terms. Remember, the radii are different, so we can't factor those out but we can factor g, m, and m out, so we get that g, m, and m over in the front. And then what we're left with is 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2, like that. And when we do this equation, this is the equation that we use to find the change in the potential energy. Okay, now the change in the potential energy is going to be positive in this case because r1 is less than R2, so when we go 1 divided by R1, we're going to have a positive number, a larger number here. Now, you have to remember that, as I said before, the radius R is not just the orbital height. Okay, the radius is, the radius in this case, this R is the radius of the Earth plus the height above the Earth's surface. You have to add those two values together, and you'll see that in the example that we're going to do in just a moment. So this is the equation that we use to calculate the change in the potential energy. Don't forget, it's 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2. Now we're going to derive the equation for the total energy needed to raise the satellite to a higher orbit. 
This is also the equation that we can use to find the amount of work, because those two values are equal to each other, the amount of work that we need to do to raise a satellite to a higher orbit. And we are going to start with this equation, which says that the total energy at the lower orbit, plus any work that we do on the satellite, or the fuel from the satellite does, will be equal to the total energy at the higher orbit, right? In order to raise a satellite from a lower orbit to a higher orbit, we have to do some work on that satellite. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to derive a general equation for the total amount of energy at the satellite that we can use at both orbital heights. And that is that the total energy is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. And that means that the total energy is going to be equal to 1 half mv squared. That's our equation for the kinetic energy. Now, we do have a plus sign here, but remember the equation for the potential energy has a minus sign in front of it, so therefore it's going to be minus gmm over r. This is the same equation that we had for the potential energy on the previous slide. So now we need to find a way to relate this term to this term so we can simplify it, and we're going to do that through the velocity, because you'll remember down here I showed you, or not down here, but you remember the previous video I showed you how to calculate the orbital velocity of a satellite. The orbital velocity is going to be equal to the square root of gm over r. Well, I can square both sides, so now I have velocity squared is simply equal to gm over r, and I can substitute this term in here for my velocity squared, because the velocity squared is equal to gm over r. So I'm going to do that, and I get the total energy is 1 half m, this m and this m, the mass of the satellite, are the same, and I substitute gm over r in for my velocity squared, and then I still have my equation for the potential energy. So this is my kinetic energy, and this is my potential energy. All right, now I'm going to simplify this or simplify and make it look a little nicer. And that means that the total energy, this is my term for the kinetic energy, is gmm over 2r is minus gmm over r. Now I'm just going to substitute, not substitute, I'm just going to subtract this term from this term, because this is 1 half and this is like a whole, so to speak. And then I get that the total energy is just minus gmm over 2r. So this is a general equation that we can use to find the total energy at any orbital height. All right? And then what I'm going to do in the next slide, I'm going to substitute this value in here for the orbit at height number 1, and we'll calculate the, we can use that to calculate the energy, the total energy at orbit number 1, and then we can substitute in here and find the total energy at height number two. We'll do that on the next slide here. And I'm just going to substitute this term in here for both of these total energies at height number one and at height number two. And I get minus, don't forget the minus sign, gmm over 2r1 plus the amount of work is going to be equal to minus gmm over two times r2. Then I'm going to simplify this equation, solve it for v, for v, for w, and that means I'm going to add this term to both sides, and when I do that, I get that the work is equal to, when I add this both sides, then this becomes positive, so now I have gmm over 2r1 minus gmm over 2r2, like that. Now, what I'm going to do now is, as we did when we calculated, I got the equation for the potential energy, I can factor some of these terms out because this g, this m, this m, and this 2 are the same for both of those equations. So I'm going to say that the amount of work that we do is now going to be equal to gmm over 2. I can factor out gmm and a 2, gmm and a 2 from both of those terms. And then once again, I'm left with 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2. So this is the equation that we can use to find the amount of work that we have to do to raise a satellite to a higher orbit. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do an example where we'll calculate the change in potential energy and the change in the amount of work. Now I just wanted to show you first of all 
what these equations look like. Remember, this is the equation we use to calculate the change in the potential energy, and this is the equation that we use to calculate the work. They look very similar to each other, except this one is GMM over 2, which really means the amount of work that we do is half the change in the potential energy, and you'll see that in the example that we're going to do. Now, we're going to say we have a satellite that's 775 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, and we're going to raise it to a height of 800 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. The satellite has a mass of 689 kilometers, and the radius of the Earth is 6,378 kilometers. Okay, now all we're going to do is substitute those values into our equation because we already have the equation in the correct form because we want to calculate the change in the potential energy. And we can just say that the change in the potential energy is g, which is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, times the mass of the Earth, which is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. Okay, I'm leaving the units off here for space issues. And then the mass of the satellite is 689 kilograms. And then I have my 1 over r terms. Now one thing you have to remember is that you have to add, as we said before, the radius of the Earth plus the height. So this first term is 6378 plus 775. And then you also have to remember that it has to be in meters. These are given in kilometers. Kilometers is 1,000, so you just take this term and multiply it by 1,000, 10 to the third, minus 6378 plus 800. You'll know this is 25 uh, kilometers higher, also times 10 to the third. And you can see that the change in the potential energy when you do all of that on your calculator is 1.336 times 10 to the 8 joules, like that. Okay, so that's the change in the potential energy of the satellite when we raise it from orbit 1 to orbit number 2. Now we're going to get the total change, the amount of work that we're going to do. Okay, and this, once again, is the equation that we had for calculating the change in the potential energy. And we, when we calculated the change in the potential energy, we got the change in the potential energy was equal to 1.336 times 10 to the 8 joules. Now, as I mentioned before, this equation for the potential energy and this equation for the work look very similar to each other, except this one has divided by 2. So what that really means is the amount of work that we do is half the potential energy. So you can see, you could put all the terms and the values in here again. They would all be the same, except you have divided by 2. Or we can just take this term right here, just take this term and divide it by 2, and you get that the amount of work that you do is 6.68 times 10 to the 7 joules. Okay, this value is half of that value. Okay, so this is the change in the potential energy. This is the amount of work that we do, and that's how we derive those equations and then use those equations to calculate the change in the potential energy and the amount of work. So there you go. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following five things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos for step-by-step -step science. Click the notifications bell so you don't miss anything. You should give me a thumbs up. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.